Hello and thank you for buying Henson's Flying Machines Mark 24 Spitfire. This is the last variant of Spitfire produced and comes with the bubble canopy and clipped wings. This kit includes five sheets of laser cut balsa wood, the tissue you will need to cover the aircraft, the decals, the vacuum form canopy and stickers. For instructions you have the instruction sheets contained, this video and the parts numbering sheet. To assemble the kit you will need a standing knife, scalpel or similar hobby blade, balsa cement or super glue and a reliable 90 degree edge. Begin by numbering the parts on the sheet in comparison to the parts list. Each part has its own unique number which will tell it in the instructions where to go. Once you have identified each piece you can either mark them with a pencil or do it freehand. Begin removing the pieces from the sheet in the order required by cutting through the small balsa tabs which hold each part into the sheet. This should be done carefully with a sharp blade and as far as possible breaking the grain or along the grain keeping the same laser cut profile. To begin construction you will need parts 1A and 1B which are the two sides of the fuselage. Part 2A which is your centre and part 3A. Begin first of all by fitting part 2A into the slot you can see just here. One, two, three, fourth back and that will sit like so with the tab into the top. With that in place you can fit the other side directly over that. Slot it down like so and then just gently push it into that tab with its final alignment. Part 2A fits just to the rear of that there, like so, and forms the support for the lower wing section. With those in place, you're going to need part 5A, which is the nose section. At the moment, none of that's glued, it's all just kind of dry fit. Now this 5A is going to go just over the tabs on the nose section of the fuselage there. That's going to hold that in place, like so. Now, before it's glued, this is quite delicate, so align it, check with a 90 degree surface. But everything is seated as it should be. Squeeze the sides of the fuselage together. Once you're happy with it, you can then go in and glue along the tabs and everywhere that the two pieces of wood butt up against each other. Do that for part 2A and 3A on both sides, making sure that there's no space between the woods and that everything is lined up nicely. Hold that tight until it glues. Move it around, add a little bit more glue in any sections that you feel aren't stuck quite right because this is going to be the wing root and it needs to be securely held in place. Now, attaching part 5A, simply hold it with the two slots filled with those tabs, turn it over and run glue along the inside. Make sure that you get a nice coverage the whole way along this joint. This is going to be the base for the nose and you're going to glue all of your nose gubbins onto this. Hold that until dry. The next part you want to do is further down the fuselage. This is part 4A and this is going to go towards the rear of the cockpit section. Now gently pinch the fuselage together, slot part 4A into the tabs on the top of the fuselage and then just press it together with those setting down into those tab holes there. Now, as there is some slight variation, you may need to just trim the tab as it goes in. I'll show you now how to do that. Just with the edge of a blade, just slightly peel it back. The other thing you can do in this case is use a nail file, which is good for finishing the entire kit. There you are. Now, slowly taper the fuselage backwards putting a little bit of pressure on there until you have 
a nice flat surface the whole way along there and then just run a little bit of glue all the way along the joint so it sits nice and flush and hold it tight while the glue dries. Towards the rear of the fuselage you have part 6A which is a similar shape to 4A and sits into the tabs further back here. From the top push it down securely into the tabs slowly pinch the fuselage together and ease the part into position being aware of how delicate the balsa is. Now before you do any gluing just make sure that the fuselage is aligned by moving it around in your fingers looking at the tail sections there checking that it is aligned from all angles and then securely glue it all along that joint like so. Moving along to part 7a is the rear of the cockpit slant. This fits into the two strangely shaped tabs here which are angled backwards. This half egg shape sits flat on here and angles upwards to meet part 4a and should sit quite easily into that space there. Now drop it into the space, make sure you're happy with how it's sitting and then glue the tabs into place. Don't worry too much about gluing the back of it as that will glue into place when you put the stringers in. The front of the cockpit or dashboard is part 8A which fits into the slanted shape just to the front of the cockpit here. Now that should press down into the tab holes at an angle, push it all the way down and then just gently pinch the sides of the fuselage together until it's sitting flush and glue the insides here just on these two tab sections. Now hold until dry. Part 9A is an optional part and forms a cockpit floor. As you'll see one end is slightly tapered. Turn the model over, slide this in from the bottom and then slowly move it backwards. This just builds strength into the kit. Don't push it too hard or it will snap. You need to make sure that it's clear of the side gaps and of the bottom. You can use it angled up just to come into the bottom of the wing tab there and then glue all the way along the edges. If you're building in some cockpit detail or eventually flying this is good support for the wings. It also gives you a little bit more core strength and sits like so finishing off the bottom of that fuselage section. Part 10A forms the bottom of the fuselage and the wing section. As you'll see here, it's aligned with these two tabs forward and these three stringer mounts towards the rear. If you fit it like so, with this line here, just in line with part 3A, and then glue it on the internal, just along here, and then all the way wherever it joins up to the wood. This will form a wing guide and also a strong centre brace. I want to make sure that you've got a very good bond with this as it's going to take a lot of the strength in the aircraft if you're flying it and have any hard landings. Right. Setting the fuselage aside for a minute, we'll start on the tail section. The tail assembly is made up of parts 11A. 12A and 13A. 11A is the tail upright, 12A is the bracing which fits inside the fuselage. Slide this into the lower of the two tabs facing forward like so. Now the slot in here can be a little bit tight, be careful not to break it. If you do need to widen it, do so with a little file or with the edge of your blade and then slide it in all the way to the back there and then glue along the edge. Should be quite a tight fit. There you have the stab of the aircraft. You're going to fit part 13A which is the horizontal table into the rear of the upright. Slide that in carefully there. Again it should be quite a tight fit. Slide it in all the way along until it butts up like so. 
Now, you can slightly adjust the angle of attack on the tail here. I'm going to keep this one flat. Again, be very careful. This is a very delicate part. Make sure that it is at 90 degrees, this angle here. And then, glue all the way along the edge into the seam on both sides and underneath. Now, once that's dry and you're happy with it, you can begin fitting it into the tail. With the tail of the fuselage like so, you'll see that the triangular shape slots in thusly, leaving the horizontal of the tail sitting on top of it. Move it backwards beyond the end of the tail until the taper just aligns just with the inside of the cutout, keeping it flat like so. You'll see how the inside protrudes slightly beyond it. Make sure it's down flat. Check it for alignment the whole way along just by eyeball and then turning it over run some glue along this inside edge. Like so. And hold it in place until dry. On the internal, glue in part 12A of the triangle into the fuselage body. Then continuing to pinch these together, just run a little bit of glue onto this section here, just to hold it in place securely. And allow the tail to dry. Moving on with the fuselage, parts 13A and B are the top formers for the nacelle of the aircraft. 13A slots into the tabs towards the front of the aircraft here, like so, from the top, and then just slides gently downwards to be flush into the tab, like so. 13B goes slightly further back, just in front of the dashboard, and again slots down into the two tabs there, push from each side. Gently, just make sure it's seated all the way down. Once you're happy with the way it's sat in the tabs, just a little bit of glue on each edge. Like so. Now, turning the aircraft over, 14 A and B, working exactly the same way in the two remaining slots underneath the engine housing. Slot them down, these are interchangeable. Slightly press the sides of the fuselage together until they're flush. Glue on the inside, making sure that they're down firmly into the slots. 14B or A, in fact, slightly further forward. Push down into the tabs. And then glued in place. Now, if the tabs do protrude slightly, you can sand these down at a later stage and it won't affect the model in any way. The next stage is to start building the nose, which starts with parts 16A and B, these two cutouts here. Now these press together with the use of this little guiding jigsaw and if you lay them on a flat surface, push them together, they should mate up perfectly. Keeping the edges flat, just a little bit of glue along the seam. Be careful not to go to the work surface. Move it around a little bit. It should remain flat. Now parts 17A and B are the next size along former for the nose. Which are these pieces here. Which butt up against each other without any assistance. And then glue end on like so, just make sure that they're aligned as you go. And of course, following on in process, 18, A and B have these jigsaw guides and will push each other together, like so. Make sure that if there are any burrs from where it was attached to the wood, you remove those so that they've made up correctly. Again, clear them in place. 19, A and B are these Pac-Man and ghost-shaped items which will, of course, jigsaw together like a broken egg, like so, with the square in the middle. 
on the square surface, glue along the seam, hold it in place, and then your next part are 20A and B, which are these half circles with a diamond cutter in the middle. Now press those up against each other just to complete the circle, and then glue along the seam. Now, building the nose should start from part 16. With this in place, put part 17 over the top of it, and then just carefully align it so that you've got top and bottom matching, the center lines matching, and just turn it around a little bit until you've got that center lined up, which should form a guide. Glue a little bit on the edges, but not too much, because you're going to want to sand all of this nose section so that it forms a nice curve. And glue will, of course, restrict that a little bit. And then on the insides, like so, your next section can go on top of that there. Again, align it to the top of that hole there. You'll see that the bottom is slightly out of line, but that's fine. Then align the sides and the top and glue into this little gap at the bottom here. Now again, you're going to sand as much of this away as possible as you're building the model, or finishing rather. You just need that center more aligned and solidly glued. Now this is going to build up a big solid balsa nose for you. Your next part is this section, 19A and B, which is a completely different shape and it's going to sit towards the top of that section there. Make sure that it follows and tracks around in a similar line, then glue it on the sides just a touch, turn it over and glue it solidly on the inside all the way along. Now don't worry if it doesn't look too rounded because you're going to sand all of this with a nail file or some sandpaper to get a good shape. Now your base circle here, part 20 A and B, sits on top of that there, fairly central, aligned to the top. Hold it in place, turn it over and then glue all the way around that circle there. The absolute final part here is part 21A which pops over the centre there. Turn it round so that it aligns nicely, and then pop a little bit of glue underneath. And slot it into position. Now, once you've got that kind of shape, you're going to want to take a nail file or some sanding paper and just sand this away. Try and keep the profile at the front and at the back there. But everything inside can be shaped. Once you have shaped it, which I'm not going to do now because it's very time consuming, glue the entire assembly to 5A, which is the front of the aircraft. Now when you're doing this, it should cover all of the slots at the top and at the bottom. You can move it around until you're happy with the way it's aligned. Get that in position and then just on the inside of part 5A, drop glue down there into that seam with the wood touches and it will hold it in place and form a solid bond for your nose section. The next parts to put on are the fuselage side formers, which are 23A and B, 24A and B, and 25A and B. Now you'll notice the longer one of these has the exhaust profile on. Now if you are covering the aircraft, it makes sense to remove these by gently paring away the wood at these lines here and then reattaching them after you've covered the aircraft. But as this is a demonstration model, I'm not going to do so. What I am going to do is lay the exhaust profile part into this little cutout slab here, just into that tab there, allowing it to rest forward, coming all the way to touch up to the nose and just making sure that's pushed in flush. Now you want it straight the whole way along. Start by a little dab of glue at the front, then all the way along where it touches the formers, pushed in, flush to the fuselage, and then slightly curved backwards and a little touch of glue to hold it in place. Once that's dry, you can do the same on the other side, slotting it in into that slot 
and then letting it drop down to fit flashly and make sure that it is aligned centrally and straight the whole way along. Glue from the front pressing it down to make flash with the fuselage and then bending that last tail section back keeping it straight. Now, when you do cover the aircraft that's going to give a lot of the contours to the side of it and give you a really nice lovely shape. Now for the rest of the side formers 24 is the lower of the two and goes into the bottom of these two cutout rectangles there. You'll see the cutout shaped tabs there and just press it in, push it down glue just at the front, make sure it's down flush the whole way along little touch of glue and then press it into place now if these don't initially fit you can trim them to fit the spot on and then just that tail spot as well and all the way along just a nice smooth fit do the same on the other side. Just like so. Now 25 A and B, these sections here, have additional sections in which are optional in the design, which are these power bulges. Now, once in place, these power bulges can be fitted over the extruded tabs here, which will give an extra dimension just to the top of the engine nacelle on the aircraft. Now, they will need to be put on and then sanded flat. I'll demonstrate these now. First of all, glue 25A into place, down into the tabs as needed. Of course, if there is any discrepancy in the cut, just make sure that you get a nice smooth fit by trimming away any excess material. And then, carefully but firmly. Pressing it into place. Glue once again from the front backwards. And as you go along, making sure that it sticks to the contours of the aircraft fuselage. There we go. Now, these power bulges can sit like so, and what they're going to do is help slightly beef the side of the aircraft out a little bit. but. Once they're in place, you're going to need to sand them away quite powerfully. I'm going to leave them off for now. If you don't want them, you just trim these tabs away, like so. Leave these to one side for now. Again, they are optional, you don't actually need them. Um, it's just in case you are building in more shape for that engine nacelle, which I prefer the look of it without, but they're there if you need them. There are a number of stringers included in the kit. These long strips of balsa are used to make the stringers on the fuselage and cut length as needed. You'll notice that there are two shorter strings. Those are your main wing spars, so don't use those ones. Cut out along the length, very end of all of the stringers. 
pressing the whole way along and then you can use the spaces between as extra stringers. You're meant to have plenty of spares just in case there are any accidents. Stringers can be quite delicate, can break, and it's also very useful to save them in case you do have a crash lamp and you need to make repairs. Thin bolster is very useful. Now, once you've got them like that, simply break them off all the way along very carefully remove the tab. Now, we will start with the nose here. Now I'm going to press down the very end there, into that 5A, the top centre there. And I'm going to start by gluing that press all the way down into that little centre slot. Now once that's dry, I'm going to move along, pressing it down into all of these centre slots there. You get a nice curve backwards. When you tissue your aircraft, this is going to help form the actual shape of it. And just before the dashboard there, I'm going to glue it in place. Just put a little bit of pressure on with the blade and snap it off nice and clean. Now that leaves me with the rest of the stringer to continue along. I'm going to put that end down there again into the nose, laying it backwards onto one side of 5A, pushing it down firmly, doing it nicely in place, and moving backwards. Now the only thing I'm going to do a little bit differently here is before I get to the dashboard and gluing to the dashboard I'm actually going to cut it before I glue it so that I can get it to sit nicely because the dashboard will stop it from seating itself properly. And I cut that away now very gently put it down into that seated area and then glue it in place. Now I'm ready for another stringer so I'm going to pair one off very gently Repeat exactly the same process on the other side. Down into that nose area. Follow it along, making sure it's properly down into all of these slots. Then, again, before the dashboard. Start very gently pairing it off so that it now fits down flush and a little touch of glue to hold it in place. Now once you've done this you can also add a little bit of touch of glue here to hold the dashboard to that forward former. Just give it a little bit more strength. Now you can see it's properly starting to take on that bulbous nose of the Spitfire. Moving to the rear of the aircraft I'm going to start by gauging the length of this top spar here. As you'll see, it fits into the front of the stab there and just behind the rear of the cockpit here. Now, I've measured it by eye and very carefully trim it by hand. Lay that down supported. Never be afraid to go back and just double check. tabs like so. Glue it to this tail section here on the stab. Move forward into the top of all of these slots and all the way to the rear of the cockpit there. Now you can continue doing the same on the sides of the aircraft. Make sure that you start with a part that is long enough so pair off another one. Now with this one we're going to start just behind that cockpit former there. Touching up to it very gently. And I'm going to align it there, glue it into the top of this part here, and then the next one along. Again, make sure it is down into the slots. Now you'll see here that it's come all the way across to the stab. Now what I'm going to do is in line 
with the stab there, I'm going to use the blade very gently, slice it out to that centre of the stab, and then I can curve that inwards where it meets the tail, glue it in there so that it gives it a nice graceful shape. Now when that's all tissued up, that will look quite good. Then repeat that on the other side, exactly the same method. All the way up to the rear of the cockpit. Now when you're doing your sanding, just make sure that the rear of the cockpit curves in nicely. It's going to be covered by your canopy of course, but the right shape works as well. Also, this particular kit flies better as a free flight model without the canopy, so that is something to consider. Uh, that's again, keep it in line with the other side, what you've done there. And you see, again, now you've got to be very gentle here, not to put too much pressure on, but also just to slice off when necessary. Move it towards the inside. And glue it in place. There you go, now that's the top formers of the fuselage all in place. Turn the aircraft over and we can work on the bottom formers. Now there's only one former on the rear section of the aircraft here. Now this one starts at the very tail section of the aircraft. So we're going to put that in place now. And we'll align it into these bottom slots here. Push it all the way up to that tail wheel there. And then just glue it in front of that tail wheel. then into the bottom of the slot here. This is going to help make the curvature you need. Now, you will notice in the wing former here, there is a little davit. Now that needs to be cut, the former, so that it slots straight into that little cutout davit. Right, so just use a flat edge of the blade to push it into place, and then glue it. Very simple. Now, moving along to the underneath of the engine, slightly more complicated here. What we're going to do is start from the middle front there, push into that slot at the front, like so, keeping a nice angle to it. And then you're going to have to be very careful not to bend it too much and break it. Don't glue it in place yet. You're going to want to bend it and glue it. So bend the front, glue that first tab into place. Then with all of the tabs sitting where you want, align it to this center slot here, the slightly longer one, and then just trim it just so that it's going to drop into that hole there. And now glue it at the end. Glue the end section in place, then you can glue the centre section and that's going to create a really nice powerful bulge underneath the aircraft. It's a little more complicated to do, but it does get a nice effect. Now we're going to do the same on the sides. Now again, let's glue the front into place before we do any of the curvature. It's quite easy to break some of the string is here, so don't be worried, you do have spares, you have about five or six spares if needed. But so long as you follow gluing at the front and at the rear first, it should go into place, no problem. See it's straining a little bit there. With the fuselage now complete, we can lay it to a side and begin working on the wing sections. For this you'll need part 26A, and 27A, 26 being the leading edge of the wing and 27 being the trailing edge. Now these jigsaw parts here help you to slide the wing sections together and guide them into space. Right, so do this on a flat surface. I've just put the two halves up against each other, make sure that they're firm, and run a little bit of glue through the joint. Make sure not to glue this to the work surface. You want the outer edge of the wing and the inner edge of the wing to be securely stuck. 
Now there are four main types of wing webs. As you'll see, they are marked by the different combination of holes, either round or oblong. The first ones you want to work with are wing profiles type C, which go on the very outer edge of the wingtip and slot, like so, down into the wingtip. Glue this all the way along that seam where it connects onto the wingtip. Get a nice strong bond with it because any flying impacts are going to be absorbed along there. The next part you need is the longest part here, which is type A. Your first one is going to go on the inside edge of the wing and you want to slide it into the slot and then push it as far forward as possible and glue it all the way along where it connects with the inside of the wing root. A nice strong bond along there. Now the next one to notice is type D, which is a different shape in having two round holes and one oblong hole. This is the only wing rib that's going to fit in this particularly different shape here on the angled side. So just slot that in there, make sure that it is a nice fit, and then drop a little bit of glue front and back to hold it in place. Now we can go back to the earlier type of wing rib, which is the same type as wing rib C, but with the oblong holes. These will slot very easily into these holes here. Press them forward as far as they'll go, holes forming a guide, and glue them front and rear, flush and all the way down. Now, moving close to the inside of the wing, I'm going to go back to the longer type distinct wing ribs which have round hole, oblong, oblong, round, round. Now these are going to fill in the rest of the spaces. All the way along the wing. Now with these laid in place, you can glue them front and back. You'll also notice that the aileron is not in the wing at this point. The aileron can be made moving and free if you're converting to micro RC. However, if you're doing free flight or static model, simply pop the aileron in underneath the wing ribs so that it'll be covered. If you are going to convert moving ailerons, you'll want to trim the wing ribs just in front of where the aileron is mounted. If not, glue the aileron to the wing ribs wherever they meet and all along that front edge. Now, for moving ailerons, it's probably best to use a small paper hinge in here, or even a threaded hinge, if you like. So that completes one wing. Moving on to the second wing, it's crucial that you build a mirror image of the first wing. So lay out all of your parts next to each other, and these are going to be parts 26B and 27B. In this way, you'll be able to make sure that you're building both a port and a starboard wing and not two left side wings. Right, moving on, I'll skip building of the second wing and move on to fitting them both. With the wing sections assembled, it's time to fit the wings to the fuselage. At this point, do not glue in the main wing spar. That will come in once we've already fitted it. The cutout slots here will fit over the tabs in the bottom of part 10A. Just push those over there, helping to align it until it lines up with the wing root there, like so. Once that's flush, you can allow the wing to fall downwards or upwards in relation to the fuselage until it comes into contact with the spar here, part 3A. Now, before gluing it anywhere else, glue it to spar part 3A and where it meets the fuselage. Also glue the small tab into place. Turning it over, 
glue the wing root to part 10A in a very solid bond because this is going to take any impacts from any heavy landings. So, now once that's securely dry, you can just press the trailing edge of the wing upwards to meet the fuselage and just glue it in place, touching the fuselage like so. There is also this tiny little L-shaped piece which fits into the trailing edge of the wing up against the fuselage like so. Just to finish that classic Spitfire shape. Just touch that with a little bit of super glue or balsa cement and bend it in into contact with the fuselage. You can now fit the opposing wing in exactly the same way. With both wings in place, we can now fit the main wing spars, which are the shorter and thicker of the stringers provided in the kit. Pull these ones out. Be careful not to crack them. And then lay them into the tops of all of the wing rib cutouts. With the end butting up to the inside. And then pressing it down gently into the first one, two, three, four wing rips to here. And with that in place, you want to just slice along the outside edge of that wing rib, break it away, and glue initially to the fuselage and then into the top of each wing rib. Because this wing has a solid leading edge and a solid trailing edge, it's all right to have a divided main wing spar, as all of the strength is already built into the wing. The main reason for this wing spar is providing shape. So now lay this in the remaining four, butt it up to the inside one, and then glue from the inside. along that edge, all the way to the wing tip, the very top of the wing ribs. I'm going to creep that on the other side. With both main wing spars in place, the kit is almost complete. It remains to fit the control surfaces on the tail. There are two horizontal flaps, and these fit like so, straight on here. Now, in a static model or a free flight model, you can glue these in place quite simply. If you are building for RC, this can be a delicate corner here, and I recommend you trim it back and then hinge this main section with this glued directly on. In this case, I'm going to glue it directly on, leave it in situ. I'll just make sure you get a nice joint of glue the whole way along there and put it up soundly. And the same with the little outer tips. Now if you are making it movable, I'd recommend using paper hinges. They add a little bit of strength and a bit more durability as well. Now the upright rudder is all robust and that is a solid piece of balsa which can either be hinged to the tail upright or in this case I'm just going to glue it directly along that edge like so. See if you do get a little bit. like I just did, we can correct that. And 
another great way to make balsa stronger is to just run a little bit of glue along the cut edge. In this case it would be this rear controlling surface. And that'll just seal in the grain and give it strength all the way along. There you are, and that is the completed airframe. There are a few little accessories that are going to go on after you've covered it, such as these tiny little machine gun inserts. Very simple to fit, if you imagine that the aircraft's already covered now. A little bit of glue on the end, and these simply pop into the leading wing tip holes here. Now of course, in a free flight model or a or an RC, micro RC model, you're going to want to leave these out because they are delicate and they will break off. But in a static model, they do finish off the appeal and the shape of the aircraft. We'll pop all of those in now. Now this kit comes standard rubber powered and all of the accessories you'll need to make it rubber powered are included in the kit such as the rubber, the propeller, a little wooden bearing, and the cotter pin to transfer the power and a matchstick to mount at the rear here to mount your rubber motor. But in this case if you're going to be converting it to any other form of power we'll leave it like this so you can see how it should go together. If you are putting electric in here, you want to put all of that in before doing any of the stringers on the top of the fuselage. You can also make mounting for your servos. The best thing for this is little linear servos and all of your control gear. And anything remaining on this is the landing gear, which is very simple to put together. Um, obviously not a lot of use if you're having a fly model. You want part 30A, 31A. Now these fit together quite simply popped into that little cutout section there and then glued all the way along. Now again it's very important that you make mirror images of each one. So just compare them until you are sure that you have a mirror image. Get that straight down the middle and glue it all the way along. Now these fit into the little T-shaped cutouts in the bottom of the fuselage like so and can just be glued straight in place, um, angled forwards of course and slightly outwards. Now there are wheels provided in the kit, um, this one should come with the Balsa Eco wheels uh, which are made of three pieces on each one, they glue together and then are suitable for any aircraft of the scale. Right there you go, that is your completed Mark 24 Spitfire Clip Wing Edition. It also comes with the bubble canopy, what you'll do is once you've covered everything trim that down to fit flushly over the top of the finished fuselage and when you're totally happy with it glue it in. In your instructions as well you'll find the cutouts to use for the inside of the cockpit, the instrument dial, the rear of the cockpit and also a folded paper seat. Thank you very much for buying Henson's Flying Machines. See you next time.